Thank you for choosing Access On Demand. Access believes in continuing education, and we create content to empower you to learn and grow anytime, anywhere. Let's get started. Well, good afternoon, a uh, good, uh, good day for many of those as well. Welcome, uh, we're so glad uh, everyone could be with us today. Uh, just to kind of set a couple of things for our discussion today, uh, we absolutely um, encourage your questions, um, and we would encourage you to drop those in the questions panel um, there in your GoToWebinar control panel. And if we've got time at the end of our broadcast, we would be happy to address some of those questions. And so we definitely look forward to that. Um, but um, from the whole team, thank you so much for being here. We're excited to have the discussion. And I'd like uh, to turn it over to Rich to get us started. Thanks, Clay. Uh, first of all, everybody, welcome to our Q3 webinar. Uh, knowing how uh, busy and how much change is going on in our industry, I can imagine each and everybody had a very busy summer, but hopefully it was a good one professionally and an even better one personally. Um, as you probably saw in the news, it was a very busy summer for Comply Health. I know we've been implementing a lot of change in the when I started over two years ago. Uh, I know some of that change has been tough, but I know it's uh, also benefited a lot of your care team members and administrators and staff. And we couldn't be more excited going into this webinar to talk about how that change is only going to accelerate, but in a good way in terms of the continued investment in ContinueLink and Suncoast and the additional resources that we're bringing to bear. Uh, so I'm going to go through the agenda in a minute. But I wanted to take a second just to um, uh, let you see some of the faces and names of people that are going to join this webinar. Today, we're really going to focus on uh, what is changing and what you can expect, uh, what benefits you can expect from the bringing together the strengths of Comply Health with Access. And so for our presentation today, you're going to see some uh, familiar faces that you're used to. Myself, Rich Berner, CEO of Comply Health. Uh, at Paul Mitten, who has been on all of our webinars and many of you met personally, um, who heads up product, and then a bunch of new team members uh, from Access, uh, Andrew, CTO, Shrada, who's in charge of solution delivery, Tammy Ross, um, professional services, Clay, who you met up front, and Wendy is going to talk about the uh, client experience. I'll let each of these people, uh, in the interest of time, introduce themselves when we start. Uh, but Clay, let's go ahead and jump to the agenda. So what I'm hoping to do today is I'm going to touch base on some content that you've seen in the past, just a reminder of where we've been in terms of trends we've seen in the industry, how that has been driving our strategy and what our vision's been. And I want to open up with that because when we talk about why we uh, decided to uh, combined forces with access, how it's accelerating a lot of the things that we had in place. And then ultimately, you know, through that, we'll be talking about uh, what this means for your agency in the near term and in the midterm, as well as the long term. Um, then we're going to get back to a bit of business as usual, as Paul and Shrada talk about the uh, product roadmap and what's going on in product. And then uh, we're going to wrap with um, you know, there's, you, you'll see throughout the presentation today that certain things we're figuring out and there's some benefits that are going to come um, as soon as Q4 and Q1 next year, but there's definitely some things that you can take uh, advantage of right away. And we're going to go through some of those events and some of the training and certification and how to engage uh, with a combined new company. Um, as Clayton said, you know, please do ask uh, questions in the chat window. We'll try to address those at the end of each sec end of each uh, section if we're on time. Otherwise, we'll uh, hit them at the end. But with that, let's go ahead and go forward, Clay, and jump right into the content. All right, back to industry uh, trends. I think everybody is seeing. We've been talking about this for over two years, uh, and there's. While reimbursement and staffing are um, challenges that continue as far as across all industry trends, we know everyone's struggling still with recruiting and retaining and development and reimbursement, the government continues to squeeze. The good news for all of us is there is a continued push by payers and um, the government to push home into the care, uh, which is great news. While we gotta work through some of those staffing and 
and um, reimbursement challenges, it's great news that everybody finally recognizes that home is where people want to get cared for. And frankly, it's where we can drive some of the best quality and consumer experiences when we're delivering care to consumers on their terms. Uh, but all of this uh, push to get care in the home and the push to change reimbursement models is uh, um, causing some M&A that we're, you know, even during these tough times and uh, this year, we're still seeing a, uh, a bit of M&A taking place. And with that M&A, people are, whether it's through acquisitions or through organic growth, are trying to diversify service lines so they can succeed in the future. And this is one of the core tenets of our strategy that we predicted over two years ago, that as people are diversifying service lines, to be able to manage patients all across the continuum of care, it's going to be easiest and there's going to be a push to move towards a single platform as people are trying to move out of uh, reactive fee-for-service care into proactive um, predictive uh, health management and chronic condition management with a tech first approach where they're automating everything possible. And then the other trend that we saw during COVID that we think is still gonna um, pick up in the future is anything that can be done remote, people wanna get care where it's most convenient for them. Sometimes that means, hey, if it's at a certain time that's easier to do a type of visit and that visit can be done remote, we're seeing continued demand and growth in remote care. Let's go forward, Clay. Now, how has that uh, driven our strategy? Uh, as we've talked about, and you guys have seen the smart aging platform as we have been building you know, this bridge of ContinueLink and Suncoast to a modern platform that connects administrators, caregivers, consumers, and their family members on the consumer's terms. At the core of that strategy, um, uh, Clay, if you hit next, is that single platform. And we have been working on really hardening that platform, improving the user experience, automating as much of the workflows as possible. But we know that you all want to move towards a single platform for home health, pediatrics, staffing, therapy, home care, hospice, uh, palliative care, which continues to uh, grow in demand as well. And as people are moving into chronic condition management, they want to move, um, you know, behavior, integrate more behavioral health services beyond just bereavement across all mental health conditions, which ultimately help drive chronic, can, uh, chronic care management. And as we think about this single platform, and while many of you have said you want to move towards a single platform, you've also told us that you, you know, we recognize that you know, not everything is going to be on a single platform all the time, particularly as you're going through M&A, even if the goal is to get each uh, new service line that is acquired or a new agency that's acquired on a single platform, you're still going to have to interoperate with everything and everyone across the community so that you can provide the care team with that full picture of, um, you know, the full patient story, the full patient journey. So we, it's critical that we interoperate. And with that, um, as much of the functionality on a single platform, pulling in data from across the community, we have the ability to build that personal health record so that we can move from electronic health records into a personal health record where we can pull in things like Bluetooth devices, be monitoring patients real time, um, factor in more of the social determinants of health where we're pulling that into the personal health record real time. And when we have all that information together, what you see is many of you have met, we've been talking to her a long time, Emma is now the brains behind this new personal health record where Emma is your electronic medical management assistant. She's monitoring that personal health record 24 seven and looking for opportunities where um, instead of reacting to care that comes up, we can predict when someone is um, getting test results or showing symptoms where they're outside normal limits and we could have uh, engaged proactively where Emma becomes the brains where she's an intelligent router deciding, hey, if I can automate this level of care, I'm going to automate it. If I'm going to, if I need to help connect this patient or this consumer with a care team member, I'll decide is it, you know, can we connect with that aide who's going into the home or a nurse or a doctor or a therapist, as well as connecting consume, um, family members of the client or the consumer. And then ultimately, 
when we connect all these pieces together, this is the path to do what a lot of you have been asking for. Clay, if you hit next, is how we shift from uh, reactive care to proactive and predictive health management. And down on the left, many of you have uh, met Emma. If you haven't, you can um, use your phone and scan the QR code in the bottom left hand uh, to see Emma in action. It's an example of a shift blast, uh, what the experience is like for a uh, care team member who's in the field when there's an open shift out there. Uh, I'll give a pause there for a second in case anybody wants to do that. I'm, I'm guessing by now many of you have met Emma. We know we've launched Emma at a number of clients and uh, the clients who've rolled out Emma, particularly on the shift last, have seen increased uh, admissions and revenue without uh, having to increase staff, which has been um, you know, great news, but positive feedback in a number of places. All right, now that we've gone through that, let me talk about with that as the backdrop, as we were thinking about our path forward, I think everybody knows we've been investing heavily in ContinueLink and Suncoast and want to continue to. And as we figured out how do we deliver this vision as fast as possible and the leadership team was thinking about options, um, we decided the best path forward primarily because it's going to accelerate the path to that single modern platform across all service lines is to combine with access. Now, of course, a lot of people are going to ask, well, what does this mean for me? If you hit uh, next, Clay, you know, uh, first of all, I think as I was considering options here, one of the best things, and you're going to feel this as you get to know access if you don't already, the value of joining a founder-led company um, versus a private equity-backed company John and the team at Access think long term. If you hit next, Clay, what that means real time beyond a culture that is a um, uh, something that is as mission driven and, and focused as we are. John, since he thinks long term, doesn't think, oh, how do I have to quarter to quarter drive more growth or drive out more cost? Um, and as it pertains to uh, your agency. Roadmap acceleration was the first thing John and I talked about um, when we initially met, and as well as these cultures blending. And from a roadmap acceleration, if you hit next, Clay, what this really means is um, probably the biggest thing that most of you are concerned about is, you know, uh, many people have asked, "Am I going to have to switch off ContinueLink or Suncoast?" There's no, um, there are no um, plans to sunset either of those platforms. Uh, current plan is, again, back to John and the Access Leadership team thinking long term. They are not only not asking me to reduce size of engineering teams, Paul, to figure out how to squeeze more out of it. We're doubling the size of the engineering and product teams at, for ContinueLink and Suncoast because Access, like us, is very client focused. And as we started to bring these teams together, the focus was, hey, we got to make sure we deliver the roadmap. And that discussion went from, well, not only do we got to make sure we deliver the roadmap, we have to figure out how we can accelerate some of those um, uh, roadmap items. Now, so, as you can imagine, doubling the size of an engineering team, uh, you know, takes time to bring everybody up to speed and it takes time to figure out, you know, identify which things we'll be able to accelerate. So you, it will take probably to the end of the year. Paul's going to talk about some of those um, targets uh, that we have in mind. But the other thing that's going to be coming is additional service resources. I know some people have um, you know, struggled to um, get health checks going faster or get implementations going faster. Clay, let's go ahead and hit next through a couple of these uh, additional things. But the resources, um, you know, these engineering resources are not only going to help accelerate roadmap items, but there's a number of folks who've wanted, had tickets and backlog for a while. This is going to help us accelerate backlogs. And throughout today, you'll start to get a sense of the additional thought leadership, the government lobbying, and the influence that comes. And with that, um, you know, the other key areas, I think what most people are going to get excited about is just how much uh, training is available for your staff. Uh, now, each of these things, your client success executive or your client success manager will work through, uh, work with everybody. But my biggest hope today is coming out of this is one, recognize no one's gonna be forced to 
uh, switch off, um, you, you know, Continue Link or Suncoast anytime soon. It's absolutely our goal to take the things you love best that are differentiated about Continue Link and Suncoast over time, build those into the Access platform because Access already today has a single platform that's a modern, easy to use platform across all service lines. And ultimately coming out of this, it's gonna be business as usual in the near term while we try and accelerate that vision that I walked through uh, up front. Um, Clay, have we seen, had any questions come in yet? It doesn't appear that we've got some, so we can continue on. All right, let's keep moving forward. Um, I think this is a good time to transition to my new colleague, Andrew, who is the CTO. Andrew, if you want to introduce yourself and uh, let's give uh, the former Comply uh, Health client base, now Access clients, a good uh, uh, introduction to Access and the culture and all the additional resources coming. Thank you so much, Rich. And, um, you know, one thing was apparent when we started to have conversations earlier when I met you and Paul and Brian. It was that there was a lot of chemistry between our leadership teams and our two companies, as well as a lot of alignment, a lot of cultural alignment, a lot of synergies, a lot of um, a shared vision of how the industry, um, where the industry should be. So thanks again for your leadership. So as you guys heard, Andrew Lowe, I've been with Access um, for 15 years as the chief technology officer. I know I don't look um, that old, but I've been building web, web applications since the late 90s, so I am a little older than I look. Uh, but what's most important really um, is what Rich has shared, is what access and comply coming together means for you. But what I've been tasked to do today is to share with you why, right? So let's move to the next slide, Clay, thank you. So we begin um, every meeting, internal, external, with our vision and mission. It, it, we're very purpose-driven. It keeps us focused on what's most important to us. And our vision at Access is to be the most successful global healthcare technology company, most admired for its people, partnerships, and solutions. And our mission at Access is to empower healthcare organizations and professionals like you with the world's best technology solutions. So let's keep going. Um, so we've shared the vision mission, and um, I also wanted to really um, talk about this slide. Um, I'm not going to spend too much time on it uh, because, as you can see, it speaks to the to the depth and breadth of access. So um, there's a lot to take in there. I'll let you do that. But what I want to share is that the most important thing to me on this slide is what's in the top left corner, which is the one ownership since founding. I think you know the benefit of having one ownership, uh, John, um, since founding is that we can make decisions quickly, right? And also we can do what's in the best interest of our clients and our industry and our employees at all times, right? Uh, we have a, a culture called the Access Way that really informs how we treat our employees, how we treat our clients, our partners, stakeholders, our community and our industry. So that's very important to us um, that we keep that uh, top of mind. The other thing that this slide doesn't share, uh, that doesn't, the story that it doesn't tell is how comprehensive our solutions are. We have uh, home health, home care, hospice, palliative care, revenue cycle management solutions, and, and it goes on and on. And as you've heard Rich talk about, um, we will be taking the best of, of what we have in Compliant, what we have in Access, and that's what you get moving forward. So lots of numbers on this slide. Before I go, I do want to also share uh, a few more things. One thing you learn about Access is we have a history of firsts at Access. Um, most of you may have seen the announcement, uh, if, um, you know, in the summer uh, that Access is Hydro certified. You may also know that Access is CHAT verified. We are ACHC certified. We have our ISO 9001 quality management certification. Access is a network service vendor. It means you're Claims get paid faster, and the list goes on and on. And I keep, I can keep, you know, going on and on. But I'm really not here to sell you an access. I'm really here to tell you and show you why access, and just give you, um, um, you know, share a lot and introduce you to access. And I think the last thing I want to do is share John's story. You know, I, I joined Access 15 years ago, like I said, and when I joined, you know, um, we were a consulting company 15 years ago. And prior to that, John had really started um, as a one-man 
um, one-stop shop for home health agencies. Um, and this grew out of um, being a poor college student, right, in the in the early 2000s and understanding through his um, aunt um, how home health works, you know, and spending time to really go from being the, the IT resource for most of those home health agencies to being a full-on, you know, consultant for them and and being able to start their agents, being able to start home health agencies, being able to be a one-stop shop for them. Back in the day, we used to sell chart dividers, right? Most of you know that. Um, we as a company provided that in the past. So we've been there, we've been in this industry for a long time. Uh, we, we understand the pain points, we've solution for it. We have a leadership uh, team now, including, you know, Rich, Paul, um, and, and Brian that has years of ex experience uh, leading um, organizations such as yourself. So Access is really here for the long haul. Um, we believe that the future of healthcare is in the home and everything we do every day, our vision and mission is to make that vision reality. So this is just a little bit about Access. I, I think I've exceeded my time. I'm gonna hand it over. Um, I'm, I'll welcome questions at the end. Thank you guys. Over to you, Wendy. Thank you, Andrew. Good day, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. As uh, Rich had shared in the introduction, my name is Wendy Conlon. I lead our client experience team here at Access. I am a clinician um, by profession and have uh, practiced in the care in the home space for over 25 years now, leading a, um, a large multi-site, uh, multi-state organization um, with the full continuum of lines of service um, prior to coming to access. Uh, I want to share our vision as it comes um, through from a client experience perspective. We have um, our team is comprised of four distinct uh, pillars, although all interacting together uh, to ensure solid support and truthfully growth of um, of your organization. We want to be a partner. Uh, we know that the landscape of care in the home is ever changing. The needs and demands are ever changing and the ultimate visit, vision is the future of care in the home. Uh, and that's where we want to empower you. We have our, our team here, our account management team who will partner with you. Um, and, and this is um, our CSEs have joined this team as account managers and um, truly looking at key performance indicators, looking at feature releases, making sure that we're aligned um, with the growth strategy of your business portfolio to ensure full success. Our client concierge team, in addition to what account management is doing, is very similar in that term. And again, partnering closely with you to ensure as we release the features and functionality and as we look at that growth opportunity, making sure that the key performance indicators are leading us to that growth. And again, constant communication, constant partnership. From an implementation perspective, this is our team that is transitioning uh, clients onto our suite of solutions, um, ensuring uh, best practices and a consultative approach um, to, again, make sure that we are embracing the process that is in existence and absolutely taking that to scale for ease of operation, efficiency, and truly delight in, in the day-to-day -day interaction with uh, with our full suite of solutions and our client success team. This is our team that is really the boots on the ground. These are our team members who are working continuous, continuously um, with our client partners in, uh, on, from an online resource perspective, online um, questions and answers, and then also certainly via phone. Um, you know, our goal again is to work side by side to make sure that um, your investment in our suite of solutions is truly working um, to meet and exceed your business needs. Um, and that comes through increasing revenue, decreasing overall cost, streamlining the operations for efficiencies, ensuring compliance and improving patient outcomes, uh, which is at the heart of, of why we do what we do. So look forward to spending time with you. And, and again, thank you for the time today. Yeah, and uh, just to underscore a couple of things real quick, um, back to while you know we're going through more change and the resources that are coming, Andrew talking about high trust, we're using uh, their team, their experience to add more resources to our hosting to make sure it's more secure, more reliable, 
um, performs better. And then Wendy's team, it's been just a pleasure getting to know her and work with her because she drives a client organization with a client focus um, very similar to the culture we've been building. But I think what people are going to be most excited about when you get to know Wendy and team and we start to combine the power of their tools with ours is Access's approach to client experience is very data driven using your actual data to help prioritize. So think of the health checks we've been doing, but on steroids and happening more real time. And just from a people person, you know, folks who've worked with Aaron and Liz and Manny and the CSEs, these teams are now not only integrated with these teams, but additional resources being cross-trained so that we have better client coverage in that experience. You know, this is the team that I wanted Wendy to take just a couple minutes to say hi because a lot of you are going to get to know her and her team and it's going to be critical to making sure um, you know that your experience not only is as good as it's been but gets better i think it's over to you paul so uh good day everybody it's uh absolutely um a pleasure to be able to present um what this does mean for our product roadmap excited to talk about it um, as introduced earlier, my name is Paul Minton. I'm the Senior Vice President of Product for Kapaya Health. Uh, you know, I think uh, I would say that I'm a reformed nurse, meaning I <laughs> work in the dark side. I'm in healthcare IT for the last 15, 16 years, but but uh, before, you know, this whole process, I've been al always been a nurse, right? And so a nurse first, understanding exactly the needs of what you guys face every day, I think it's been important to translate into what we do uh, in our products and very excited that uh, Access actually brings a wealth of that clinical leadership as well. So, uh, you know, i um, happy to have a larger team and uh, more people to, uh, you know, share concepts with. So that's always been excited. Uh, Sharada, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself here as well so we can, uh, you know, when we transition, you won't have to do that then. Absolutely. Thank you, Paul. Uh, good day, everyone. My name is Sharada Ayer. I support our engineering and product teams at Access. And, um, you know, really, just like John, I've grown up in the industry. Uh, it is my personal mission to make uh, technology easier and more accessible for everyone that is in the care at home space. And, uh, you know, it's what we continue to do every day. And we're really excited about our organizations coming together uh, so that we can truly accelerate that meaningfully for all of y'all. Perfect. Thank you. All right. So, um, you know, one of the things I like to start with is our, you know, the themes. What did our client advisory board and our clients tell us at the beginning of the year, which was important for their business? As Rich alluded to earlier, uh, you know, there was a set of market trends that we wanted to make sure that we were capturing for. And so it was really important, uh, you know, for us to capture those and, and understand that everything that we do around the product is uh, mapped back to these themes. And uh, Clay, you can build it out. And with that said, I think that what you'll see is uh, some of these themes are familiar uh, because we're still working through them. But these are seven themes that have really been prominent through our 2023 roadmap. You know, these themes are centered around the idea that if we provide a human centered design experience, uh, you know, on a mobile first platform with the approach to automate as much as we can and deliver analytics to help you guys improve financial and uh, client outcomes while also making it easy to exchange information with payers and providers, we do believe that it will make you, it easier for you to do business uh, as well as improve caregiver satisfaction, which is utmost important, and provide meaningful interactions with the consumers and their families. And so I think that what was new for 2023 is the seventh theme, which is interoperability. Uh, and with that, it's very important that we focused on, you know, uh, you guys being able to uh, interoperate with other vendors, other pairs, other products. And so this was a big uh, theme for us that we uh, undertook this year as well. Okay, Clay. You know, this is, uh, you know, we want to spend a little time talking about the, our line of business roadmap and inevitably um, I pr provide this roadmap view of all of our products, not just one product, the other. And of course, based on the audience today, I think that's uh, very appropriate. Um, with this line of business roadmap, we're going to, you know, you'll notice at the top is our 
uh, hospice and, and palliative care solutions and uh, what we're delivering on. And then at the bottom is our solutions for our home care, hospice, pediatric care, staffing and therapy uh, solutions and features that we're delivering on as well. But I'll start with the top, our hospice and palliative care. And uh, you know, the first thing to note is that we continue to make progress on promoting interoperability uh, with ONC certification by adding uh, changes to support our clinical term coding and reporting in general. We'll also be piloting our new financial dashboards uh, for um, AR management, agent management, I think was important. And then also the Today Counts console will be adding trends, uh, a trend view for clinical symptoms to be able to view those trends over time. And of course, we'll continue delivering on regulatory items like ICD-10 codes, as well as uh, wage index rate updates. In R4, um, over the far right box, uh, we'll be focusing on, again, clinical uh, document architecture, CDA, and fire creation and ingestion. And listen, this does go in support of uh, promoting interoperability, but really what's at the heart of this is, again, this is the standards of sending and receiving documents from uh, other uh, you know, vendors, other companies, other facilities. So for you to be able to take in referrals electronically, this is why it's important to do these things. It's not just for the fact that we can say, you know, hey, we've got a solution that promotes interoperability, but more importantly, it's the everyday use that you'll get out of it and the gains for uh, the value of the business. Um, also for some symptom management orders, we are auto creating physician orders uh, when treatment is set to the profile. Uh, there will also be a number of stretch items like medical spell check that we're trying to get in. Now, one of the things I think is important to note, as we talked about earlier, how access has come in and provided us with double the resources that we had before, I really thought about how do I encapsulate that? And what would be a, basically a two word phrase that would really mean what we're, what we're talking about here? So I use the term gas pedal. And when we see gas pedal, what that means, these are the difference uh, you know, these are the items now that we're able to accelerate the roadmap with that, um, you know, with the extra support that we're getting from Access. And so you'll notice that all the stretch items are now in, as well as uh, we have four new items from our uh, client enhancements that we're able to deliver as part of that in these areas. So, for example, medical spell check, which I know all of our Suncoast clients have asked for for a long time, is now committed, which we're really excited about. Um, adding um, more logic for forms and uh, smart logic for clinical forms is also on the docket for us. And then you can see a couple of other items that are now in as a result of the additional resources doubling the team for Suncoast we're going to be able to do. For home health and home care, um, we are going to be working on uh, delivering on cross time zone scheduling. Now, this is uh, something that was really important to another organization. Not everybody's affected, but I would say that we have some of our clients that are in multiple time zones. They'll have, uh, you know, the patient is in the central time zone and the office is in the eastern time zone, and maybe the clinician is either in the eastern time zone or a central time zone. The bottom line is all those time zones can get pretty confusing pretty fast, right? And so we're providing a way seamlessly that when you're entering the schedules and uh, notifying caregivers, uh, there's no thinking that has to take place. You enter the time the client wants to be seen and uh, through continuing that just happens behind the scenes. All of that is, is uh, um, delivered and notified in appropriate time zone that the, that the client uh, or patient or caregiver is in. So very exciting functionality there. Uh, for supervisor uh, visits, we're improving uh, in per performance there. We're actually adding additional parameters for uh, visit settings to help uh, that process out as well. And then we'll also be providing regulatory updates with uh, ICD-10 code updates, as well as um, delivering on uh, Texas EVV um, updates. As we know, there was a big switch out in Texas with the EVV aggregators. And so, of course, we are going to deliver on that as well. Uh, for R3, there's a lots of stretch items like uh, caregiver search filters, adding it uh, to our um, attributes page, and then um, also developing more EMMA features with secure messaging filters. For R4, release four, and that's the far right bottom, um, we're, we'll be adding in EMMA for expiring credentials, 
Uh, this is very uh, important functionality. We know that it is very um, hard to manage those uh, credentials and a lot of clients are doing it manually. So when you think about uh, CPR expirations or educational expiration dates, you know, we really feel that there's a way to automate that through Emma. And so what Emma will be able to do, if you think of the example of a CPR card, Emma will be able to send out a notification well in advance of that card expiring based on the attributes and interact with the caregiver to say, hey, have you gotten this updated? If the answer is yes, they're able to upload that image with their phone very simply. And then Emma will scan the document to validate uh, the date on there. And then the back office becomes updated and all the boxes are checked and uh, becomes a very automated process. If the answer was no, um, it will be able to, Emma will be able to provide, uh, you know, classes or schedules that you can sign up through interactively. So a very helpful feature um, with Emma that we're looking at. We'll also be uh, doing more with reoccurring schedules. As you know, this was a new release for us where we uh, have provided new functionality for master scheduling. And now with Emma, instead of being able to send out one shift at a time, we'll be able to blast out the entire um, clients or patients schedule to caregivers to be able to fill in uh, online automatically. Um, and you can see that we do have a lot of stretches like our homepage, um, you know, part two of the homepage redesign with adding KPIs in there. And I would be remiss if I didn't, uh, you know, really say that with that, with all those stretches, now that we have gas pedal in effect, um, these stretches are now included. Uh, in the release and committed to. And so this uh, provides additional caregiver gender selections as well as an added item there. Um, but if, but again, these uh, things like the home page part two, where we can now um, really become that home page becomes that um, one stop shop where our caregivers and schedulers by uh, by role can actually look at everything in real time and know what's going on. But more importantly, these KPIs real-time analytics to show them how they're doing and actually drive uh, drive their day very uh, smartly right so efficiently it gives you a little bit of satisfaction to know hey i'm working hard and it's paying off because i can see my indicators moving going green all the way so that's uh, very exciting for us uh, to be able to deliver that next slide Uh, going, again, talking about our uh, hospice and palliative care solution for half one. I know it seems like a long time away, but it really isn't when you think about where we are today and the date. Um, but we'll complete our uh, look to complete uh, uh, our certification for ONC uh, and promoting interoperability. We'll also be doing things like enhancing scheduling. Again, a lot of client requests around this. Uh, this will provide two home health aides uh, to on the same schedule for the same client, which is, you know, uh, has been a kind of a paper cut for our uh, Suncoast clients today. And then um, expanding Emma capability, once again, more automation with the uh, weekend tuck-ins. If you think about, you know, uh, preparing your, uh, your patients for the weekend, you have to do things like make sure they have a medication supplies, make sure their plan is in place for anything that happens, to make sure everybody's got what they need. And we really feel that Emma is going to be able to automate that process from start to finish and have the family members as well uh, interact with Emma in a real and substantial way to make sure everything's covered. And more importantly, uh, being able to know if something is not covered, Emma will be able to not notify people, the right people at the right time uh, with that information so it, you know action can be taken immediately and then of course there's a lot more to talk about in half one of 2024 but again these are some of the things that we're thinking about for home hospice and palliative care but then if you apply the gas pedal effect you can see that there's a lot more that we're going to be able to deliver uh, such as keyboard shortcuts for smart forms i know you're thinking keyboard shortcuts not a big deal it is a big deal because it's efficient, right? It lets you move through very quick. And so I think that's going to be important. Uh, automated eligibility checking. We know that that is something that is near and dear to our client's heart. Uh, smart charting macros. So we released smart forms a while ago, but now we continue to deliver on uh, capabilities with creating macros for smart charting. And then, of course, um, alert and guidance based on previous context. So 
uh, having the ability to look back at things that have been done in the past uh, on the on the patients and being able to provide alerts and guidance based on that, I think will be a big uh, step forward for our cl clients. And then last, uh, but certainly not least, uh, Emma shift offer for our Suncoast clients. We've already delivered the ability for Emma to fill missed shifts for our home care health health, uh, home health clients. But now in our uh, hospice solution, we'll be able to have Emma deliver uh, open shifts uh, to caregivers to interact with uh, through the web and uh, be able to fill those shifts automatically. Now moving down to the bottom left for our home care, home care and home health clients, uh, we will be delivering on um, uh, more capability with uh, Emma with a physician signature. So again, you know, in our hospice solution, we delivered this already where we can now automate the process of getting physician signatures. I'm pretty sure if I took a poll of how many people on this call don't have issues with uh, getting uh, physician signatures, I bet you nobody would raise their hand. Uh, we're still doing it the old-fashioned way in a lot of aspects with the fax machine. You know, that was invented in the 1800s. I know it's great technology, but, you know, there is a better way, and we can automate it with Emma. And Emma will be able to send a message uh, to the physician via either secured text or secured email without any uh, software to install our in, their end, but be able to view the orders and sign off on it instantly. Uh, so that has a profound effect on, you know, not only – um, you know, client satisfaction, but also on a physician satisfaction in billing and coding. Um, we're going to be able to have Emma propose new times as far as the uh, missed shifts go. And, uh, you know, today, Emma, can you can you can decide, hey, I can take a shift and either change the time. Uh, but now you'll be able to actually propose that you can take a new time based on a half a shift or a different day uh, with this capability. And then, um, you know, providing read-only access to our pages within um, home health. Today, you can you can secure it by, uh, you know, people don't have access to these pages by security, but there could be reasons why you want them to be able to view something on a page, but maybe not interact with it. Um, and I think that these are a nice uh, capabilities that uh, we'll be able to add. You know, we're also, um, again, we're also remiss if I, I would be remiss if I didn't say with all these great features, what else can access bring to the table and what have they helped us with? So again, last time you'll hear me say it today, what is that gas pedal effect? Well, the gas pedal effect is now we're going to be able to bring more task learning to the home page. Uh, we're looking at Emma to be able to deliver on facility scheduling. So as you know, we serve a, a wide swath of clients and staffing is one of them. Uh, and for staffing, the ability to uh, be able to send out multiple shifts to be filled at once uh, for our clients that do staffing, I think, uh, it, you know, is is key there to their success. And then, of course, uh, the same theme as uh, facility staffing is the ability to edit, edit their GPS coordinates for uh, facility units, because uh, it's not always accurate to be able to do that, I think, is a good step forward for our staffing uh, clients as well. I know I said a lot in a short amount of time, but I think if you uh, go to the next slide, I think this is, you know, again, I, I said I wouldn't say it again. I'm going to say it again. What does gas pedal mean from access? Well, we talked about it, what it means on the roadmap. But what I think it's really important, uh, I would ask Rada to kind of highlight um, the things that, uh, you know, that access is bringing to the table to really help uh, enhance our roadmap and deliverables. Next, Clay. Thank you, uh, Paul, so much for going over that roadmap and really excited uh, for our ability to really accelerate what we're doing uh, using that gas pedal effect. Um, and you know, in addition to uh, everything that Paul talked about, stability is also going to be, you know, you're going to see constant improvements in stability. Andrew mentioned, you know, 99.999% uptime. That's something that we uh, take very seriously at Access. Of course, being high trust certified, it's really part of the standards that we uphold. Um, and you know how are we able to do a lot of this is we candidly have uh, several engineers working for us uh, and we truly work in a 24-7 uh, across the globe fashion uh, we have you know of course uh, on the access side do about 
a weekly release over 300 software releases. But all of these people that we have now taken some of them and added them to our continual Link and Sunco scenes, uh, the beauty of them is, you know, they come with deep industry backgrounds, even on the engineering side, they have gone through not only a certification where they are highest quality uh, from a coding and ability to deliver technology perspective, but they also understand our industry and what they're building. Uh, and Tammy will talk to about, you know, how you can leverage some of our training and certification programs, but all of us uh, within our product and engineering teams are certified both on the technology side, but then also on our industry as well. And that only accelerates our ability to execute, especially as we continue to plug in and provide that support. Thank you. Thank you, Shraya. So real quick, there was, <clears throat> I saw one question come up about scheduling that Suncoast is meet the uh, needs today. I think after, uh, hopefully you're seeing that the amount of investment's only gonna grow, I think, um, first and foremost. But I would get with your client success executive or reach directly out to Paul and make sure you have a detailed follow-up on what is the roadmap for scheduling. And like many of these things, again, our goal is to continue to accelerate the roadmap for continually in Suncoast. But as you see these solutions come together, there's already people who some of their agencies are on access and or some agencies that we're looking at access. So anybody who wants to learn more about access, um, while we won't be pushing people to do that and pushing people to switch, we absolutely welcome the opportunity for anybody who wants demos and wants to learn more and we could get those set up for you as we move along. All right, why don't we uh, keep this moving along so we stay on track and turn it over to you. Thanks, Rich. I'm Tammy Ross, and I'm the Senior Vice President for Professional Services here at Access. I have about 35 years in the care at home industry, a little bit older than Wendy there, but um, very similar background working with pretty large organizations, uh, multi-state, multi-site organizations. I've been able to work globally um, and open the first um, certified home health and hospice in Guam and Saipan. Uh, that was pretty fun. But I think probably the most challenging thing I ever did was implement uh, an EMR from, from paper to full EMR in about 50 locations. Um, that was challenging. So when John came to me um, in 2020, and obviously we know that was COVID year, um, he, he asked me to develop a training and certification program, but something that was very different than what's out there in the industry. We wanted to be able to solve workforce management issues with distribution of staffing. Um, those of you that remember COVID well and was working um, during that time, you remember the fact that clinicians could really um, cross um, state boundaries. Uh, we were able to get clinicians from one state to the other and, and, and they didn't have to have reciprocity. Unfortunately, we didn't have a way of onboarding them. Our next slide Clay's going to pull up is really about our training and certification program. What we did was we took our, our knowledge of the industry and we combined that um, with our EMR solution um, training so that we could onboard staff very quickly and deploy them to needed areas um, across the United States. That was really the start of training and certification. Um, three years later, uh, we really see it as a real workforce management for onboarding, for creating efficiencies, for improving compliance. Um, and I think honestly for us as an organization to have over a thousand employees that are certified at the highest level um, handling our customer base, um, I believe that is you know, just a real value add. Um, we have proven that we can lower turnover through training. Um, and that we can get higher efficiency um, through, through these training programs. And I wanna offer you the ability, um, you can take a moment and scan here. This is absolutely free. Um, I'm, an, I'm a nurse by trade and I, I, I love the helping and the give back. Um, so this is really our give back. Uh, we, we upload free trainings on there, um, usually on a cadence of about every other month. Um, as well as what's already on there. We have something that's called Caregiver University that trains up home health aides, hospice aides, and honestly lay, trade, um, lay uh, caregivers. 
So take an opportunity to scan that, learn about you know the industry, learn about access. And um, thank you for the opportunity to meet with you today. Thanks, Rich. Thanks, uh, everybody. I I'll take a quick second to introduce myself. My name is Clay Hooten, uh, and I'm on the marketing team here at Access. I certainly don't have the uh, the healthcare prowess like my colleagues do, but I'm so glad to be part of this team. Um, and I'm going to walk us through a couple of other additional pieces that are readily available to everybody on the call. Tammy did mention training certification, but there are many others uh, that you all can take advantage of right now. And so I'm going to uh, walk you through a couple of quick webinars that we've got, <coughs> excuse me, that are scheduled here coming up. Again, these are in the handouts, um, which is a PDF in your control panel. You can see a couple of the uh, webinars that we uh, are, have coming up here in the in the near future. These are um, frequently, we, we they try to be on our schedule. Um, uh, Rich mentioned it earlier that thought leadership is, is something that we pay a lot of attention to uh, when it comes to what's happening in the industry, communicating that outward. Uh, it, it is something we put a lot of emphasis on. So I, we definitely encourage you to join any new webinars that we've got coming up in the future. And then I'd also like to talk really quickly um, about Agile, uh, which is uh, the Access Growth Innovation and Leadership, Conf uh, Leadership Experience. It is our annual conference. And it is more than a user conference. Um, you know, we've got uh, you know leadership tracks. We've got uh, you know navigating health policy and payments. We've got technology innovation. We've got um, you know tracks coming for compliance, Suncoast. We've got strategic partners. We've got speakers. We've got events. We've got food. We've got entertainment. It really has it all. Um, and we certainly encourage you guys to join us. It is April 21st of 2024 here in Dallas, Texas. Um, and I would not be a marketer if I did not have a video to share. And so if you'll bear with me, I'll switch slides and show you guys what Agile is really all about. And it is not cooperating. So um, I, we will certainly put it in the, in the handouts and it is on our YouTube channel. I would certainly encourage you guys to to check it out. Um, but again, April 21st, 2024, we'd encourage you guys to join us. Um, here in the next couple of weeks, we've got a couple of national conferences that we will be attending. Of course, NHPCO in Little Rock and NAC in, uh, in, in uh, DC there. Um, and if you are there, <coughs> excuse me, please stop by and say hello. We'd love to see you. And then again, this is in the handouts. Uh, I built out a little hot link sheet here that can give you quick access to a few of the things that I've talked about. And so we've got, um, our, of course, our LinkedIn page there at the top. We've got a dedicated page for Agile right there in the middle. You can also see, uh, again, click that link to view that video that did not work there for me. And then um, there at the bottom, our resource center is going to bring up our learning hub, which is going to be, again, blogs, uh, COVID-19 resources. Um, all of the resources that are, you know, right there available for you, and most importantly, training certification program that, that Tammy mentioned earlier, um, and those are all live links in the handout. Uh, we certainly enjoy you to start, it, encourage you to start enjoying some of those resources um, here here in the media in the immediate. And then lastly, <coughs> again, I'm a marketer. I got to say it. Uh, we absolutely encourage you to uh, follow us on LinkedIn. Uh, that is where we funnel a lot of our thought leadership, our video content, our blogs, any news and announcements, it is all on LinkedIn. And so I'll leave this here on the screen for you guys. We certainly encourage you to uh, follow us over there. Um, there is lots of content um, for you to enjoy, share, comment on, like, and continue the conversation. It's definitely a big deal, uh, a big deal for us. I'll leave that up there for a second. Um, but that is bringing us to the to the tail end of our presentation, and I certainly want to leave some time to answer a few of the questions that were uh, that were brought up in the chat. Team, if that's okay, we do have a few that were um, that were dropped in there for us. Is that cool with you, Rich? Yeah, let's let's hit those, Clay. Great. So the first one, <coughs> excuse me, comes from Kellen. Um, she asks, or he he or she will ask, uh, when will we be seeing a cloud-based product that can be accessed from anywhere? Um, did that, Clay, did that, uh, Your question answer. go ahead. I was just going to say, I think, um, these were answered already, but 
and I responded to everybody. There was four questions on there and uh, just want to okay. make sure we saw the answer there. Oh, great. Okay, so you've dropped answers in there, Paul. Yep. Okay, perfect. Well, if those are all answered, um, there's certainly a couple of minutes here um, that we've got open. If anybody else does have a question they'd like to submit, we would certainly be happy to address them. And while people are writing uh, those down or entering those, if there are any, um, since we only have a few minutes left, I'll kind of land us where we started. That if you think about the amount of change that is coming at your agencies, the pace of that change, while at times healthcare seems like it moves very uh, slowly, I think in the home and care in the home and care outside the hospitals and doctor's office, the pace of change only feels like it's accelerating. And so as we were thinking about our strategy going forward and how to um, drive outcomes as fast as possible and the, the different choices, um, you know, we were researching, hopefully you got just a, your first sense of why combining with access is, uh, was the best path forward from um, achieving that vision faster, driving outcomes faster. This is something that today you got just your first sense of one, the culture of these two companies. Many of um, you know these types of uh, mergers can fail if there's not the right culture. And John and I, that's where we started the discussions was making sure we got a culture and you're just getting a sense of how these two te leadership teams come together. The additional engineering resources, when this was announced two months ago, I think a lot of people thought, oh, does this mean Continuing's going away? Does this mean Suncoast is going away? Not only are they not uh, going away, they're staying and we're investing more in them, more than we could have done on our own. And then you're getting a sense of the ancillary services from thought leadership, additional le team leadership and all the experience that comes with that, as well as the experience that comes with uh, security and reliability and performance. Now it's gonna take time um, for all of uh, everybody that's on the call, for your agencies to see, uh, realize the benefits of this. And our goal absolutely is that services as good as it was at a minimum, and hopefully we don't miss a beat, but how do we improve that uh, service that you've been experiencing and accelerate the improvement you've seen in the last two years? Uh, Clay, any other questions answered? I didn't see any new ones come through, but obviously they'll be submitted. Um, those questions and answers will go back out in our follow-up document there. So I didn't see any new ones get dropped in. Perfect. Well, as always, I think everybody's known. Um, I've made myself accessible. If you see us as we're going through this transition and coming off the rails a little bit or not getting the level of support you have in the past, feel free to reach out directly to me, Paul, any of the other leaders on this call. Um, we thank you for all of your partnership to date, and we look forward to bringing you the benefits of uh, bringing combining access and comply together because I think it's going to be uh, the best solution and company in the industry. So we're, we're very excited about our future together. Let's wrap there. Clay, give everybody a couple minutes back. Excellent. Thank you guys so much. Enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you for joining our on-demand training today. Access is the only home healthcare technology company approved by the American Nurses Credentialing Center to offer continuing education credits and the most recommended home health software on software advice. You can watch more on-demand training videos through our industry-leading help center or at access.com where you'll find tutorials, blogs, white papers, and answers to frequently asked questions. Access, empowering care anytime, anywhere.